How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 38 of Park to Primaria today. And while we have, I think, a big one, I've been told that this competition isn't really that big a deal. To me, it's a bigger deal because it could be a chance for our first domestic silverware. We are playing in Super Copper de España. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how we qualify for this. I think it's a hybrid of the top teams in La Liga and in the Copa del Rey. And if there's an overlap, pity invites get sent out. We've accepted our pity invite. We've turned up to the big boy table. We're going to be taking on Atletico today. The plan is, if we beat them, we will play the final. And we'll do that as part of the episode. If we lose to them... We'll have a, maybe a little bit of a deep dive into some transfers because it is January. It is the 8th. And well, if we just look at the financial predicament, we've got almost 60 million in the bank now. Still not being given a great deal of that to spend. You'll notice that my committed spending is a little on the rise. And that's because I'm trying to get some transfer business done, everyone. Shall we talk about the players I'm attempting to sign? The first, Ibrahim al Asamar. Uh, he's a Syrian international. I don't think I've ever had a Syrian international before, but I feel like at centre attack in mid, I need a new person, and he looks really, really good. Our scouts recommended him. He's only 19 years old. He's a fully capped international. He actually plays in Syria, where it looks like he's kind of just been dunking on kids in the league where he's just way better than everyone else. But his contract's expiring at the end of the year. We are one of a few teams who have made a move for him. Apparently teams in China are also interested. I'm hoping he's going to choose to come to us because I would quite like to have a regen from Syria. It's not a nation I've ever had a player from before. And if you're anything like me when you play football manager, I like to have odd nationality regens. like that. They're like rare Pokemon or something. They're like shiny Pokemon. That's a reference that maybe half the people watching are going to get. The other player, though, is very good, is Alicia Awusu. Uh, he is a Belgian player playing for Ghent. Of course, we've got quite good history, I suppose, when it comes to players coming over from Belgium. We had Onana, who joined us, as you can see here, from Club Bruges. And well, unlike Onana, Awusu is actually available as a free transfer. We should be scouting him. We'll send our scouts off to do their bidding. Uh, all in all, though, he is a really, really good defensive player at 27 years old, just entering his prime. Not small wage demands, uh, but given the fact we can approach to sign him, I think it allows us to justify spending a little more on the wages. If we can get him, he would be a really good addition. Um, much like the previous player, there is a little bit of interest. So... Yeah, we're kind of battling it out. But with both these transfers, we are not spending any transfer budget. And in fact, on the outs, it looks like dealings could end up happening at some point. We've had a load of loan offers come in, but some big transfer bids, I suppose, of note. Uh, Onana had a bid from Wuhan. Uh, yeah, 12.5 million could go up to as high as 17.75. I rejected it. Would you have taken it? I, don't, I, ju I just don't think I can justify taking it with Onana. He's really, really good, and uh, he's been really useful for us this year, and I don't need 17 million. I've got that in the bank account. What I need is for the board to wake up and realise we have that money. And, well, he is not the only player who's had some interest from China, because as you can see here, Antonio Blanco had a bid of 25 million from Shanghai SIPG. I actually accepted this offer. I felt like 25 million was too good to refuse for a player who doesn't really have the natural fitness to play midweek and weekend games at centre mid. I felt like it was too good to refuse. Unfortunately, he's decided he doesn't want to go to China. So that one isn't happening. The only other bid we've had was for Mejica. And again, it was Wuhan with the bid. They've since decided they're no longer interested. Uh, they bid 12 million for Mejica, which I'm sure there's some people going to be sat thinking, Jack, how could you not sell Mejica for 12 million pounds? I don't really feel like we need to sell anyone. I especially don't feel like we need to sell the second highest goal scorer in the league, uh, especially at this critical point in the season where, you know, we are in second. We're looking to get back to back Champions League years. Uh, I don't think that £12 million is what Mahika's worth. And that's just my stance on it. In what is the episodely Pablo Torre update at this point? Just a little update. He's out for three to five weeks. We've not actually played that much since you were last here. We should acknowledge we have played one game. We also had a little bit of a winter bait break. Uh, we took on Rayo Vallecano and we won 5-1. Mika got a hat-trick in this one. He was top draw, but perhaps most notably of all, Pooch. He got a goal. He didn't even start in this game. He came on for Atakovic and he did this. I mean, maybe I need to start him more. I should also say Atakovic. 
I talked about trying to get rid of him last episode. There is a little bit of interest from China. Apparently, Wuhan have just discovered that we exist. I feel like we're very exciting to the Chinese teams. If they want to offer me silly money for players who I'm not overly happy with, though, I'll happily take it off them. But anyway, let's get into the Super Copper. Away from home in this first game, we are taking on Atleti. If I'm not mistaken, the games for this competition don't even take place in Spain. I think we're maybe somewhere in the Middle East. Don't quote me on that. I appreciate that sounds just absolutely ridiculous. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's what this competition is. The bottom line is, though, we're in it. We're here to win it. And this is the team we're going to go with today. Machado in goal. Marsa and Mark at left back and right back. I feel like at this point they've locked down their positions. I would love to sign Mark permanently from Manchester United. I don't see it happening right now, sadly. Marsa's looked very, very solid at left back this year. In centre back, it's going to be Velez alongside Basia. Unfortunately, Onana's carrying a little bit of an injury. I don't want to risk it. There's not much point, I feel like, in a game like this one. Uh, Machado, of course, is in goal. Who else was going to be in goal? We don't really have a standout second choice. I mean, Coke Vegas is fine. He's just like a baby Machado, actually. The polygon just shrinks a little. Uh, but no, machado has been top quality. Little bit of interest in him, but no intention of selling him at this moment in time at 23 years old. I feel like he's earned our trust as our goalkeeper. Anyway, further up the pitch, we've got Corridor, who's looked great as of late. Ahead of him, we've got Ferry. Um, I'm actually going to bring in Blanco, I think. Ferry and Blanco constantly rotating this year. Ferry, of course, kind of the backup, slightly older player who's, well, entered the final year of his contract. I don't think I'm going to renew just yet. I'm still kind of sat on the fence a little bit with it. There's no immediate interest in him, so there's no risk of losing him on a free transfer yet. Uh, Blanco, of course, could be off to China if he decided he wanted to go to China. There's a small cynical part of me that wants to unsettle him and try and make him really upset, so he wants to go over there. Watch this space. That might happen by the end of the month. Higher up the pitch, we've got Avramides out on the left. Martinez, the live commentary merchant, as some of you have dubbed him, out on the right-hand side. Atakovic. No, not today. We're going to play Pooch at centre attacking mid. And then up top, we are going to go with the one, the only, Mexica. And whilst this isn't the league, it's not the, the do-or-die fixtures that we have against the likes of Atleti in our pursuit of Champions League football, I want to win some silverware. As soon as you reach the semi-final of a competition, even if it's kind of a competition where you're invited to play in it, you want to do well. Also, we're playing at the King Abdullah Sports City, the Shining Jewel Stadium. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's not in Spain. So this is a little bit of a free hit. We'll see how they get on. Uh, they've got a full strength team. They've got Mantia, who's a regen at centre attack in mid. I mean, he looks good. I'll be honest, I was expecting a more scary player to be playing for Atleti with this squad. You can see they've got Sander Berg, Diaz, Koke, Torres in midfield. It's a good team. It's not a superstar team, he says prior to kickoff. If they now destroy us, I take it all back. They're the world's best team. But genuinely, I think we've got a chance today. I just really hope we can give them a good game. I feel like I'm setting myself up for failure here, bigging us up. Anyway, first highlight of the game, it's going to be Ferran Torres out in the wide area on the right-hand side. Now is Sanderberg, who lays it inside to Koke. And now with Angelino, of course, the former Man City man. And while it's still in possession of Atleti, although they're slowly but surely making it further and further away from our goal until that moment there. I don't know what Velez has done at centre-back. I criticised him yesterday for turning into a plant pot. He's just billed today. Ben, Ben's injured. Onana's not on the pitch. What was this? Is this just a lapse in concentration? I mean, Simeone's positioning's not too bad, I suppose. But again, just a massive gap between our centre-backs. And, uh, well, Atleti, they exploit it. They pick out Simeone. And he was not going to make a mistake with that finish. I feel like in a small way... I set myself up for failure here by coming back to do this. But I wanted to do this as a live commentary because it is a chance to upset the apple cart, to interfere with the status quo. Equally, perhaps it's a, a chance for these teams to remind us where we lie in the kind of hierarchy, I suppose, of Spanish football. We have the third lowest salary kind of total in La Liga. We're not a big club. That is just a given. But we're trying to compete with the big dogs. We're trying to do so in games like this. And while I want to see a little bit of fight, as Corridor wins the ball and gives it to Blanco, who's going to try and pick out Mojica. 
Fails on his first attempt, but he gets it back. And now it's with Martinez in the wide area. Could go back to Mark, and he will do so. Mark on the byline, back to corridor, whipped into Blanco. Maybe cancel the plane ticket to China. He's just grabbed a goal. It's 1-1 here. And at the very least, we're showing a little bit of fight. We're not going to go down without swinging. And uh, yeah, really nice build-up play, actually, in this goal. Martinez held up the ball well. I wondered here if Mark had run himself into danger. But he went back to corridor who switched that ball across. That was a bit of a risky pass. If he misplaced that there, we were very vulnerable to the counter, but he didn't. He picked out his man. Oh, well, now we've got a set piece where a pooch is going to take it. Of course, no Onana to aim for today, which is a bit of a disaster. So it's just Velez's his big forehead to look for. And Basia's, I suppose, as well. Basia has a big head too. Mark... What can he do? He could go back to Corridor. He goes inside on his own. Mahika's efforts blocked. Falls back to Blanco, though. And there's a sliding tackle there in the box. I think they've got away with one. Referee's not given it. And we're on the offensive after a slow start. After going a goal down, we are creating stuff. Although that is a risky pass to give away. And now it's Ferran Torres bringing it forward. All on his lonesome. Has an effort. Saved by Machado. Impossible angle. Hits the woodwork and Velez just about gets it away. We are living life on the edge. We're not Flat Earth FC, but we are tinkering on the brink. I should also point out Flat Earth FC. It's a real football team. Their owner is a madman in Spain who decided to change the name of the club for press reasons. Go Google it. And it sounds like I'm making up. It's a true fact, okay? Also, Blanco on a booking scares me. Don't do anything silly. We are in this game. We are in it to win it. Going down a man might put us out of it. And when Machado saves like that, might keep us in it. Again, Simeone finds himself for on goal. And on this occasion, the keeper stops it. But it might not be over yet. Because now it's Mansilla, the man who I said, oh, he doesn't look very good, whipping it in. And who's there? It's Luis Diaz at the back post to tuck it in. Nice build-up play, to be fair, from the throw-in, but we afford him a sea time and space, and then Martinez. I mean, he's not really got a defensive bone in his body. He's not tracked his man. He's not followed him in. And perhaps, on the balance of play, deservedly so, Atleti have the lead at the break, but it's close. We are giving them a bit of a battle. Hopefully, we're going to be able to continue to make things tough in this second half. I've got to resist the urge to throw a water bottle. Instead, I'm going to go with the hands crossed. I don't go with that one very often. And then the pumped fist. I've got faith in you. There's lots to come from you, lads. Don't let me down. An hour gone here. Nothing happening in this second half yet. Although, right as I say that, right as I was about to discuss the possibilities of making some subs, there's a highlight. And it's Pooch with it. Edge of the box. Can he make the right pass here? Blanco. Avramides is through. He has to score that. And he doesn't. And I feel like at this point, I just I just want to remind us here of how good Avramides is. Look how good Alessio Avramides is. He's, he's had a bit of a growth spurt as well since you were last here. This man has improved a lot since he joined the club. That said, he never really shows it on the pitch. And I don't know what to do. I mean, maybe I'm trying to will a goal into existence from him, really. I mean, Velez, unfortunately, pooch offside there. Now we're gone. Do I want to make... I was going to make changes before the miss. I'm going to make the changes now. Martinez is absolutely exhausted out on the right-hand side, so we'll shuffle Avramides over. We're then going to bring in Jorge Calderon, who showed us a lot of stuff to get excited about, didn't he, last episode. At centre-attack in mid, we're going to bring in Atakovic for Pooch. And Mahik has been poor. I'm going to bring in Puado for him in the attacking position. I feel like Puado has kind of been a, a more of a fringe player than I expected. Of course, we signed him before... Um, we kind of knew how last season was going to go. We approached to sign him in January. In truth, since he's joined us from United, I've kind of struggled to fit him into the team. But he's going to get a chance today because Mahika's had a bad day at the office. And with 20 minutes left, I'm looking for someone to step up. Massa on the near side. Throwing his paw, Koke deals with it. But Blanco is going to pick up the pieces and look to rebuild. Corridor. Bit of space over on this right-hand side. Mark is on the overlap. He's going to get picked out. Really nice ball in. Could go inside to Avramides and does. He hits it and I've willed it into existence. It's 2-2 two -two here. Alessio Avramides, you beautiful, beautiful man. Oh, we're giving them a game. It's 2-2 two -two here in the King Abdullah something or other state. I can't remember the full name. Doesn't roll off the tongue. Oh, he squeezes it into the far post. Maybe we just have to play him out on the right. But then I don't know what we do with Martinez. 
I mean, look, we're, we're two two up here. I was about to say it feels like we're winning. I should have checked the rules for this competition. Does it go to penalties? No, nope, it goes to extra time. Oh, late, late drama here. I was worried that today's episode might be a bit short, that there wasn't enough to talk about between the transfers, the one match that we won, and this game. We're going the distance. What can we do? Mark, not the most inspiring of throw-ins, dare I say, but we still have it. Basia now with the ball. And, well, we give it away straight away. I thought we could build from the back. Instead, we've just gifted them possession. Tete bringing it forward. Simovic to Mancilla, Simeone, Angelino, lovely build-up play. It hits the woodwork and Mark gets it away. I feel like since I've renamed him to Mark and stopped ruining his, ruining his name, he's played better. That may just be a placebo, though. Puado leading the line, spearheading the attack to Avramides. He's got his juices flowing. He's got one goal. He's gone down in the box. The referee is consulting VAR. I'm hoping he's going to get the pen here. This would be a huge, huge moment. Is the penalty going to be given? It is. And the man over it with Mejica off the pitch is going to be Puado. He's not a bad penalty taker. He's not as good as Mejica. What can he do? I mean, that was as good as anything Mojica could have delivered in that moment. 3-2 up against Atleti. Puado hammers it home. 15 minutes left of this game, and then maybe a couple more on top of that. We're in extra time. We are ahead, though. Don't get carried away, Jack. Don't get carried away. And well, before I can get carried away, they've got a set piece. It's a throw in on the far side. Simeone, edge of the box. Do not let him get a shot on goal. Do not let that shot on goal happen. It's hit the woodwork and gone over. That was too close for comfort. Into the second half of this extra time we go. And to be honest, what, with seven minutes left, just, just time to start time wasting. Time to kill off this game. They're going all out attack. I don't want to make any changes. This could be a critical error because there's a highlight. Ball whipped in. Calderon heads it away. The youngster, he's not had a massive impact on this game since he's come on, but that header is as good an impact as any. Ball whipped in. Machado in no man's land, but somehow, I thought he made the save. I think it's hit the post. It was offside anyway. It never would have counted. There is 60 seconds separating us from the Super Copa final, and it might be a pointless little tourist cup or whatever, but it's a cup final, and we've not been in one of these before. Trying to pick out Calderon. Can't do so. Tete. Now to Simovic. He's had a goal disallowed already. And now he's scored. Oh, I don't know what. I don't want to look. Why did our time waste? Why didn't I go more defensive? Why is Basia not quick enough? I mean, there's 40 seconds left. I don't think there's anything we can do here. Really, we're going to penalties. Trey, but you can pick the penalty takers. I mean, Puado looked good, didn't he? I'll be honest, it's not an 11 for the penalty takers, is it now? What do you tell them? What did Southgate do and would do the opposite? We've done well to keep it. Now, that's what Southgate would have said. Don't live to regret this moment. I'm going to be brutal with the realities here. It's a shootout. We're taking second, which typically is a disadvantage in real life. I don't know if that's how it's programmed in Football Manager. The bad news is for us there, they've scored their first. And now our best penalty taker turns up, Puado. You did one in 90 minutes. I need another one here. And he's missed it. And now Tete for them. Sometimes in life you get these sinking feelings. I feel like I'm on board the Titanic. Tete scores. We really have to score this one. Avramides, this is a pressure moment, friend. Don't live to regret it. He hasn't lived to regret it. Finds the bottom corner. Keeper went the right way, but couldn't get onto it. Now with, I assume it's Sanderberg with it. Machado doing a little dance on the line. Oh, and it squeezes in off the post for a second. I thought it had not gone in, but my head rocking back tells the story. We now look at Atakovic, number 19, sends the keeper the wrong way, keeps us in it, but we do need a miss or a save. And the number of penalties in which that could happen is fading and diminishing by the moment. Atleti, fourth penalty, smash down the middle. Now the pressure is all on us. We have to score. 
we have to score. Basia on a yellow card, debatably at fault for their winner. Should have just fouled the man. Can he keep us in this? The centre-back steps up, hits it. It's a good penalty. Now we need a miss or a save. Machado, do a little dancing goal. Do anything you can. Any dark arts that might give us an edge here. I'm all for it as Angelino is going to step up for them. What antics are you going to do, Machado? Go up to him, kick the ball off the line, pull a funny face. He's going to step up. He hits it and he's missed it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I mean, maybe the fully funny face was the difference maker. I tell you what, the how long football manager makes you wait between these penalties really isn't doing my nerves any good. Mark, score this and we go to sudden death. We've been given a chance. Can we take it? Oh my word, it's the best penalty of the shootout. We're still in it. And now it's Simovic who scored that last gasp winner. He steps up, he hits it and Machado saves it. Come on, my son. I might be getting carried away here. It's gone midnight. My neighbours hate me. But this is why we play football manager. For moments like this, Velez steps up. He's been a goal scorer in the league. A goal scorer from corners. Can he do it from the penalty spot? He can. We're through. And I don't even believe it. I do not even believe it. What a bonkers match of football. I've got a second game to play after that, but I feel like we've just recorded a whole episode. 23 minutes of madness. We go through in the other game, Real Madrid, a Lukaku hat-trick wasn't enough. There was loads of drama in their game as well, looking at it. Oh my word, what happened in their game? I'm just, I'm just looking at that semi-final. I thought our game was good. But look at this. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted a thriller, five goals in extra time, a 95th minute goal to take it to extra time. Barca are the team we're going to be playing. It looks like they fluked their way through. They've got Messi leading the line. He's maybe going to be an Onana's back pocket. When do we play them? It's three days away. Let's get to it. We're going back to the Kim, Kim, King Abdullah Sports Stadium, the Shining Jewel. Maybe I can just call it the Shining Jewel. Either way, we're in Saudi Arabia. We're in Jeddah. Second game. I don't know if I'm ready. So before we get into the game against Barcelona, worth noting, Al Asamar, that will roll off the tongue eventually. It's not a difficult name. I'm just incompetent. He's joining us. Uh, I do actually have the option to buy him now for 950k. I probably won't sign him now. I mean, he's 19. I feel like we've got abundance of centre attacking mids, to be honest. Unfortunately, Pooch, one of those players, not available for today's game. And as part of my ongoing grudge against Atakovic, for lack of a better word, I think I'm going to play Calder on today. Now, unfortunately for us, we've got to shuffle things around a little bit. You can see Hardy here. No fitness test required. Martinez needs a rest, so we're going to bring in Hardy. And then we're going to move Avramides onto the right where he shone last game. That feels logical to me. Hardy's going to get to play in his position where he was shining prior to his injury. Calderon gets given a huge opportunity, but at 17 years old, I feel like he's earned it at this point. He was good off the bench last game, uh, even if he is struggling a little bit for fitness. Velez needs a rest. So I'm going to start Basia, who was disappointing last game, and then Onana comes back into the team. Yeah, it's a bit of a shuffle that's going on, but this is the team we're going to go with. I've tried to keep the changes to a minimum. The reality is there is still quite a few of them, but today's opposition Barcelona, not a team that I necessarily go into games against them thinking... We have a chance of winning, but this is a cup final. After what happened just in that previous game, anything could happen. And I'm going to will the upset of a century into existence, I hope. Truth be told, I just want a really competitive game. I want a game where we show what we're made of, we show that we're not pushovers, and we show that, you know what, whilst we are a little behind the likes of Atleti, Barcelona and Real Madrid, we can hang with them on our day. And uh, their ridiculous squad of players, of whom I think some of the individuals are on more than my entire team combined. Marsa throwing it in and giving it straight to William Carvalho. It's not what we want to see, but we've still got it here. Corridor back to Onana. I mean, get us the early goal. Give us the hope. Mark, down the line to Avramides. Looks good on the right after we swapped him up last game. 
see what he can do here. So he holds up the ball nicely, gives it to Blanco, who hits the outside of the woodwork. What a chance that was to give us the early lead. Stone shoot to Guerrero. I mean, it's not a, a team full of traditional Barcelona players by any means, but it's still some of the bigger names, I feel like, of modern football. I mean, how many seasons are we into this now? Five, six? It's kind of crazy how different this kind of Barcelona team is, but it's still a good team as well. Bode Keita whips into Francisco Trincao, a player who I have a soft spot for from the days where we had him in Football Manager. That said, it doesn't make the fact that he scored against me sting any less. Unmarked at the back post. Nice build-up play by Barcelona here. Guerrero down the line to Bolde. And, well, he found the one and only player in the box who he could pick out superbly. Really nice finish as well. Not the star we wanted. A goal down early. Let's try and hang in this for as long as we can. One goal margin. It's always possible to turn it around. Two goals. Starts to become a little more difficult. And well, we've had the better start in terms of stats. Let's see if we can keep it going here as Mahika is dispossessed. The ball goes back to De Stegen. I need to adjust in my seat. I feel like there's a goal coming, football manager. Don't let me down. Mark, Blanco, Hardy. What a ball through that is by Blanco. Hardy is back. He's back with a bang. And against his former club, he puts us back in it. We are, we're, we're just not going down here. We are, we are being beaten. We are being bruised. Oh, well, we are giving as good as we get. Or get, get, giving as good as we get? Is that, that doesn't sound right. What is the expression? I think maybe I did do it right. I don't, answers on, let me know. I don't, answers on a postcard. I wasn't going to say it. I hesitated over the postcards. Get them in. More dirt for them. I mean, it's not. I, I've been calling it. I, I assumed it was Bold AKA. I have to take it back. It's Alejandro Bold Not familiar with that player. Apologies to Bold Keita if you're watching this video and Alejandro Keita, unless you're a regen, in which case I don't need to apologise. That was a weirdly short highlight that just had a very abrupt end. They score. Well, we were back in the game for four minutes. Who, who is Bold Let's have a look. He's a real player. I mean, this is very awkward, isn't it? He's very good as well. How have I not heard of this man? I'm... He's good. He's a good player. Is he playing for Barcelona? He's playing for Barcelona in real life. Jack, how did you not know about him? The answer is, I don't know. I'm just a noob. Trincao out on this right-hand side. Free kick was taken short by Skrinier, and well, it's going to find its way back to him. Teliso now. Loads of players who played in our Leon Live team a few FMs ago playing in this team that were bashing heads against here as Teliso is maybe going to look for the other Leon Live player in Trincao. Or... Oh. Rather than today, he's going to go back to Stoyan Shu. As I said earlier, if we can keep it to a one goal margin, I believe in us to score at any moment. But the floodgates open. If we concede another here just before half time, it could be curtains for our Super Copper hopes and dreams. Taliso, Mordeur had lots of space for the previous goal. He's got that space again. And while he's going to try and squeeze it in, and he hits it wide of the post. I thought for a moment Machado had saved it. He hadn't. But well, if you thought that was. It for the second half, or for the first half, if you thought the second half was about to, well, commence its break before it happens, this is awful. What I'm trying to say is if you've gone for your burger thinking that the half's over, it's not over, get back in your seats. If you go to a football match and you go and start queuing up for food early because you don't want to queue, get get in the bin. That's that's my words of wisdom for the day. Merc, give our fans something to cheer about. Corridor! It's a weird word to shout aloud. He's hit, he's hit it over. I'm struggling for words. The occasion's getting to me. It's 2-1 at the break. It is somewhat concerning. We've only had one shot on target, but we've matched their shots total and the XG isn't a million miles away. I do feel like now, though, we're 25 minutes left. Now is the time for change. Calderon off for Atakovic. Mahika's been disappointing again. You know what? I'm bringing in Puado. He scored from the penalty spot. In open play, he might have missed one in the shootout, but we're going to forgive him for that and hope that he can show a little bit more potentness, I suppose, going forward than we've managed to show throughout this game. I mean, there's going to come a point here where I need to go more attacking, and I think that moment has probably come and gone in this game. So, better late than never. Let's make it happen now. Avramides. Hmm, what do I want to do here? I was thinking about bringing in Martinez for Avramides. I think that has to be the change. I mean, Hardy scored. 
He's a little more rested than the other options. Right, Martinez, you're coming on. You you like to do big goals in big moments. This is your time to shine. We're going to set the wing backs further forward. You know what? You know what? We're going we're gonna to go more direct as well. We're already playing pretty direct. Out of possession as well. Press urgently. Get stuck in. Mark Tyre. Just tick everything, Jack. Let's try and go for this. Onana's in the box. Onana's there and he heads over. I wanted to believe that that was going to be a goal. I mean, is there time for anything here? One last shout of demand more. I think it's going to be in vain. We don't win the Super Copper. We, we gave it a bloody good go, though, didn't we? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed we couldn't put, put up more of a fight in the end. But to beat Atleti, to lose by just the one goal margin, we kept things competitive. We didn't look completely outclassed either. And as bitter as it does feel to lose in a final, our first kind of domestic cup final of this series, I, I feel oddly positive at the, at the end of today's episode. Things aren't that bad. We've got some money to spend. We've hopefully got some players joining us. We've shown that what we're made of. And ultimately... A tin pot kind of tournament anyway, isn't it? Like, what kind of tournament is just going on in Saudi Arabia when it's a Spanish tournament? Don't care about it. The league's all that matters. And we're second in that. Didn't want to win this anyway. Honest. So unfortunately, we are defeated in the Super Copper final, but we, we gave it a good little game in the end. We now have a January transfer window to look forward to and to delve into, because we have money to burn. Board, can I ask for more transfer budget? I can ask for an increase to next season's transfer budget. Why not plan ahead? Apparently because Alfredo Perez just doesn't care. Um, I mean, Alfredo, look, there's got to come a point where you give me money to spend. Maybe it'll be today. Probably not, though. Right, gang, we are going to wrap things up here. I know I said we might go into some transfer stuff if we didn't win. Uh, against Atleti. Ultimately, it's been a long episode. It's been a barnstormer. I hope you enjoyed the games as much as I did. If you did, do drop a like on it. Back again tomorrow with more. And well, until then, it is me, Jack. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.